They look like this. All right, it should be popping up. We're live. Refresh. We're live. We are live. We're live. All right. Wow. Okay, that just you know one of those. Hey, you're live, by the way. I'm in the middle of a sentence, you know. I am Joe Orsack. Welcome to the Wine No Wine Show, the coolest, fastest growing, viral live show on Facebook. I don't care what else is out there. I'm just going to make that statement. So deal with it. <laughs> this is the show where. You can be friended and offended all in the same hour. That's right. Our goal here on the Wine No Wine Show is not a small goal. We're only trying to save America one civil conversation at a time. We're going to talk about everything that everybody tells you that you're not supposed to talk about, whether it's on social media, at parties, at the office, wherever else, religion, politics, sex, drugs, rock and roll, doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing is off limits on this show, and we're going to have a good time talking about it over a great glass of wine, and we're going to learn that, you know what, it's okay to disagree. I promise you won't go grow a disagree tumor and die. <laughs> it's That's okay. A good one. That's a good one. Yes, it's all right. We can disagree, and at the end of that, go, wow, I disagree, Joe. Pour me another glass of wine. Right. <laughs> and have a good time doing it. So... This is the part of the show where we allow our guests to introduce themselves, throw in shameless plugs for whatever they want to at that moment, and we try to keep it short. Uh, stick around. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yes. While, they're, <laughs> while they're getting ready to introduce themselves, I'm going to let you guys know that we are going to be enjoying a fantastic freaking wine that comes from the eastern coast of Australia. And despite the fact that the label looks like it says, Yanka Lila, I am told, is pronounced Yagugalila. Hey, whatever, you Australian guys are crazy, wacky guys. Learn something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you need so, to talk with an Australian accent, you know? Yeah. Something like that. All right, look, look, right? This mate. is called Yugalila. Mate. Yugalila, mate, right? Get it right. That's not a, that's not a wine. This is a wine. This is a wine. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's a wine, mate. That's a wine, That's a wine, mate. Yeah. Very well done, John. Hey, throw some shrimp on the barbie, governor. Uh, <laughs> That's my terrible Australian. Right now, everybody in Australia just tuned out. Yeah. They just said, forget it. I was giving the show a shot, but that Yankee just ruined it. So, anyway. All right, so we're going to be enjoying a great Chardonnay. This wine comes from our wine club. Shameless plug for our wine club. It's a phenomenal freaking wine club. We get wine from all over the world, and this is just an example. When I looked this wine up on Vivino, 4.6 stars. Not too dang shabby, if I must say so. So I'm going to pour myself and the rest of the guests a great glass of wine. I suggest you do the same. And we're going to let the guests introduce themselves now. So we'll start out. David! Shameless plugs. Yes, I'm good at those shameless plugs, aren't I? Uh, very glad to be back. This is, I believe, my fourth time on the show, so I'm really glad to be back with uh, this amazing group of people. Uh, my shameless plugs, I'm going to, to go with one, the standard. Uh, I am performing tonight at Casa Nueva Mexican Restaurant, starting at around 7.15 or so, 7, 7.15, depending and on the And I think I'm here. heading to Casa Nueva yep. after the show. I do a lot of shameless Info. plugs. That's right. Nice. I do a lot of shameless plugs for the show there, too, and spread the word about the, the mission and what we're doing here. Uh, and a couple of other uh, shameless plugs I want to throw out there, a little bit different. Uh, I've got a co-worker. Her name is Devin. Her husband uh, was just uh, admitted to the hospital this week, had a fall, uh, something to do with the breeding on the brain, and has a... Uh, swelling going on as well so Devin want to let you know that you're in my prayers and then also I have a, a realtor friend of mine Veronica Cunningham who has to go to Mexico and uh, she's she had a, a loss of a family member there so uh, both those people in, in my prayers remember uh, Devin Hare with Scott Thomas Holmes and uh, Veronica Cunningham with uh, uh, I'm blanking on the name of her realty company one uh, loans uh, I'll look it up it's Lone Star Realty or something like that but uh, but Veronica Cunningham so you're in our prayers Awesome. Real quick, want to say, Diana Forsberg, thanks for tuning in. Angel, appreciate you being on the show. Guys, I forgot to mention, this is a live show and we interact. So as you are watching the show, if you have a comment to make, be sure to chime in. Let us know you're here and we will address the comment on the show. If it becomes a wine show worthy comment, we'll definitely be able to talk about it. Uh, so thanks for tuning in. Steve. Okay, I'm Steve Williams and uh, this will be my eighth. 
So eight out of nine, not eight bad. out of nine, yeah. yeah. Mr. Yeah. Consistency. Uh, I, I I was out of town last week, and um, unfortunately that trip was cut short by about uh, only being two hours on my property. I was running around on my uh, four wheeler, and uh, I broke my leg again. So um, that wasn't fun. I cut the ship Steve, short. Steve, came Steve. back, and yeah, I know. I just it's horrible. I'm accident prone, so uh, I would just say. Don't stop four wheeling. Just do it better than me. That's a journey <laughs> reference, right? Don't I was like, stop four wheeling. I was totally going. <laughs> uh, there you go. See, I bring material. Great minds. I was, yeah, I, I was right yeah, there. I was with you. Don't stop. Listen to him. You're not doing me yeah. on the range. I'll bust out that. the piano. You know, <laughs> don't drink and four wheel. That's right. Journey. There you go. Yeah. A journey too. And you could also yeah, go. Journey. You could also go Flea with Mac with. Don't stop. Thinking about tomorrow. That's yeah. not, I'm sure we can work that in there. All right. So anyway, you know we should do I digress, sometime. right? Just bust out with it. Yeah. I'll get the piano in I'll here. Bob, can you turn that light center? Wow! Look at that terrible. Whoa! Light. Yeah, I noticed it was a little. Oh man, I look so pale. It was a little dark. I like so. on me. <laughs> That's your light, man. Light hog. <laughs> light oh, snob. Uh, He's a light snob and a light snob. Yes, Cindy. Snobbish. Shameless plugs. Introduction. Oh, hello everybody. I am Cindy G of the Cindy G Project, mm. and I am here to help you design. I feel like we should be on light. tour. We should. Oh, we should. The Cindy G Project live. Yes, live. On the road. In a city near you. And my ambition is to help people design the life they desire to live and live in the body they love to love. I do that with wellness tips. I do mm. that with personal development. I do that with high peak, uh, uh, high performance strategies. And uh, I'm excited about what we're doing here with direct sellers with the wine gang. Shout out to the wine gang. Somebody type hashtag wine gang in the comments, Steve, right now. Please. Hashtag, hashtag wine, wine gang. Wine gang. Houston wine gang. Hashtag Houston wine gang. We have the biggest movement going on right now with our premium wine club. Heck Joe, did you know? Uh, I got to shout out to Mr. Austin Zuloff, our mentor, Austin Zuloff, our, upline, our upline mentor. Oh my God, he is so phenomenal. Yesterday I just found out that we are the number one wine club in the world. In the world? Cool. Holy cow. Okay. Cheers to that. Wow. The number one Second wine show and where everybody's a wine club member. Everybody's a wine club member here. Everybody. Very nice. And we've done it in under 12 months. Unheard of. I'm going to have a taste for that. Oh my gosh, that's good. That is good stuff. Holy, I was trying to hold back, but I'm like, geez, that is good. That's good stuff. That is like the smoothest Chardonnay I think I've ever had. It is smooth. That is like smooth. buttery it smooth. Is I also wow. want to shout out, Ken, I'm not stealing your time, I'm not going to steal your glory too much longer. I'm sorry. I have no glory Big shout out to a couple mm. of more people. Mr. David mm. DiStefano, our founder of Direct Sellers. I just have to give you a shout out because you are the reason that we're here having this premium wine. Thank you for your vision. PJ, thank you so much for being another uh, co founder. Big shouts out to all of the members of Direct Sellers. Diana Forsberg, uh, Rebecca Garrett, my girl Tiffany Wilson, Theo Moore, all of you know who you are. Ben Deal, the real deal. You know, big shouts out to all of you. Shayo over in the UK. UK is open. UK is open. UK is, well, we're, we're so, we're like there. Yeah, like, they're, that is our they're open. We, we aren't open to the UK yet. Yes. Right. Right. They're already building. Yeah, like right. Crazy. They're rock and roll. So, yeah, hey, I've seen if you that. want to I've be a part that. of the biggest social movement in the world right now, then you need to get with direct sales. That is right. Up, I mean, in, on the get, I get in, get wine, get, get social. social. That's right. <laughs> Woo! That Veronica Hornberg, I love you. Right there. That, that is, that is, that is the, the ruler now. I'm I mean, that was, that was awesome. Very, Very well done. All right. Follow that. How do you follow that? I got more shots out later. I'm waiting for this. I'm not really going to follow it today. I have no t shirt to strip down to. Um, I spent so much time last week, I don't really have a lot. I'm Ken Snyder, and uh, I don't really have a plug. It's just uh, one question, if you could get paid <laughs> to drink premium wine and eat chocolate satin pie, would you be interested? That if, is right. If so, give me a buzz on Facebook. I'm the Texas Realtors, facebook.com slash the Texas Realtors. Or to get in touch with me for any other reason, I'll be headed over Ca to, Casa Brick, Nueva. To, to Brick House. Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Brick House go first. To Brick House for dinner, okay. and then going out to Casa Nueva to watch. David we're gonna go out and support David out. later tonight, hey. jamming out. That's right. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Mm. So, 
Welcome to our show. We're going to dive in. Look, guys, you know what? This show is not, uh, you know, we talk about it off the air, off the, uh, the waves, whatever you want to call about it, uh, whatever you want to say about it. Uh, we talk off air about the philosophy of the show, but we don't get to voice this all the time. You know what? This show doesn't have an agenda. I'm not here to prove that the right is right. I'm not here to prove that the left is right. I'm not here to argue an agenda. The whole point of the show, guys, is that America has a problem. A very serious freaking problem, if you ask me. We are more divided than we have ever been as a nation. And it's pure madness, right? We are all part of one race, the human race. We are all Americans in the freest country in the freaking world. And I think that we don't get to talk about the important things enough. Uh, talking about religion, politics, addictions like we did last week serious issues and learn how to disagree with each other it's all right to disagree we jump into topics on this show on the fly we do not plan this show this is not a planned agenda none of this is scripted right we literally meet an hour before the show start drinking wine and shooting the bull and that's how the show happens and you get to be a part of it that's the beauty of live feed so if you have a comment, something on your mind, something that's bugging you and bothering you that you want to talk about, man, put it in the comments. I will do the best I can to watch these comments and uh, respond to it as we go. And so with that said, I know that we bounced around a couple different topics before the show. I'm going to throw this over to you, Ken, because I know you had a, uh, <laughs> right, like I, I told you that was his reaction. He's so ready. His reaction wasn't scripted because he didn't know I was going to do this. Right. I was just going to say, I'm going to toss it. Talking about the lead-in with yeah, the, yeah. Uh, civil? Yeah, well, yeah. I was going to say, jump in. I know you had something on your mind that you wanted to, to discuss. Okay. And so kind of voice your thoughts on it, and uh, we'll take it from there. So the, the, the purpose of the show, uh, Joe's purpose is to save America. Differences and to be civil. So this past week after the uh, baseball field shooting in the D.C. area of uh, uh, Congressman Scalise, um, Trump <coughs> said that um, we should have a more civil discourse in the country. And then the next day, he went out and started tweeting that it was a witch hunt in capital letters and, and putting down a lot of different people. So in, in the one breath, it's we should have a civil discourse, and in the next, in the next day, it's a bunch of nasty tweets, which isn't civil. And so um, that's just, I thought it was a good... Uh, topic for the show, a good segue that mm -hmm. how can we as a nation discuss things civilly when our leader says we should discuss things civilly, but in the next breath pounds his table on on the table and says, this is a witch hunt. It's, it's, a, it's a problem that I just had today with, with my daughter. If she's out there watching, it's like in, in one instant you're being civil and the next instant you're hanging the phone up. And it's a, it's just an ongoing. It seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. And I agree. I think it can start at the top, and that's. I just thought that was a pretty, as it pertains to our show, a vivid example of, of it happening. Let's be civil. Mm -hmm. This is a witch hunt. Let's be civil. This is a witch hunt. That's not. Is our, president, know, that's, is okay. our, is our president bipolar? <laughs> Uh, no, no, real, real quick, just to chime in, Denise, Denise said she can barely hear you, by the way. Um, so, yeah. Sorry, Denise. Yeah. You, I, you know what I, I was about I, that. We had talked about this, Denise, before the show, and, uh, and, and so I was kind of cognizant of it. And while he was talking, I had the same thought. I'm used to talking very loud. So it's creating a terrible dynamic for poor Denise. Because <laughs> she's getting and me. You're a musician, uh, so you just you talk to the back of the room. Talk to the back That's of the room. That's because of years of being told that I'm yelling. So <laughs> I try not to yell, but you I too? will. I'll yell I'll... if it helps. So 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 speak up, and I'll try to be cognizant of, of toning down a little bit. <laughs> I have uh, to I have to agree with what Ken brought with this subject. In that, I thought it was uh, poor form. I agree with you. Um, he is not alone. A lot of us are not alone in that. Um, where there were many opportunities where the previous administration could have done some things to quote unquote unite the people the things that he said and the things that, that he got other people to do were very divisive. Talking and about so Obama we, now? Oh yes. Oh I thought we were talking about Trump. 
Well, Trump, Trump, change, not to change Trump has to carried it. on that, that same uh, that He same was agreeing of, with uh, you by bringing in the other side. Right. When Obama pointed back to Bush, that wasn't allowed. But now that Trump is being... Well, no, it wasn't. Okay but, I mean, it's, it's, it's an unwritten rule. But, you know, they're going to do what they're going to do. So... You, well, know, you know how they give them a power on that, right? Because, well, right. because you, you have a... And this is what this show is about. And we, and we do this. This is There's so much love this in this is room. Real. Let me tell you right now. There's no Nobody can come up in here... And do anything to any of these guys in here with me, because I'm gonna I'll take you. You try to come and sit in okay. and I get told all the time I've been mansplaining. Well, so. you well no. <laughs> what you tend to do, to do what, what tends yeah. to happen is we always what, not we, but what tends to happen is the Trump report, the Trump supporters go and say, "Oh, well, Obama effed everything up." So I, I, you know, so what you know, what else can Trump do? When in fact, Ken hit the nail on the he, he hit the nail on the head when he's. And I'm going to add dovetail on that because when you've got, you got you bring up the last administration, but you forget to talk about what the last administration stepped into. Well, but I'm I'm going to interject on that because that becomes a, a an endless downward spiral because we can talk about that going on for decades and decades and decades. Yep. Go back to yeah. the and so because here's the thing, well, I just had right a, here. Let's just stay right here with Trump. I just well, be, forget Trump. I, I had an exchange with with someone on social media about that. We're gonna look to the future. Well, no, 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 no. No, I'm, no. Here's what I'm saying. It's it's not about who's in the White House. It's about us being our own media. It's about us determining for ourselves our own standards. That's what this whole country was founded on like to begin that. with. I like so that. when when you follow the line of reason that I'm going to allow my behavior to be dictated by the worst example of my opponents, right? Because mm. this particular person on social media when this shooting happened that you referenced in your opening comment, mm -hmm. uh, said, you know, Kathy Griffin caused this because she held up Trump's severed head, right? And then the, then the Obama supporters go back and say, well, Ted Nugent said uh, that Obama could suck on an uh, M16 or AR-15 or whatever it was, yeah. right? It's well, machine gun. That, that what, what they're admitting, although they won't verbalize it, but what right. they're admitting is that's become their standard of behavior. Now what's acceptable is anything above that gutter slime level, right? And, and I asked this question, and, and to this to this day, this was two days ago, the person I directed to still hasn't responded. So I can only hope that I planted a seed, but my, my question to this person was, is that your standard for, for moral standards? How bad did my opponents act, so what, what will I support on my side, mm -hmm. right? So forget all that. That's why I say forget Trump, forget Obama. It's not about who's in the White House. It's about what are we going to accept in our society. If we become an amoral or especially an immoral society, what do you think we can expect from our representatives? And and so uh, I'll, 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 I'll go back to a conversation that predates this show between Gosh. David and I, right? And this was really a turning point for me uh, in where I went uh, with my vote uh, through our conversation that, that we've often talked about off air and that David didn't even know that he had changed my mind about something. Uh, pretty huge, actually, in, in, in that... Uh, I was out there saying the same thing as a lot of people were saying about Trump. Like, hey, I don't like Trump, I don't want to vote for Trump, but I can't stand Hillary. And seeing a country under Hillary, to me, uh, would be absolutely tragic. So therefore, I'm going to vote for the lesser of two evils. And David's question, in essence, to me was, at what point is the lesser of two evils no longer acceptable? I mean, like, if we had... Pol Pot and Stalin running, would you say, well, this one is the lesser of two evils? At what point do you say, both of them are evil and I'm not going to support either one? We go back to what David right. says. Well, no, we, no, so no, we, no, we go back to We go back to the fact when we say, and, and I'm, I'm Stephen, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pass it you right get, to you. You go. We, go. we go beyond that because if we go the lesser of two evils, then we are still in the same situation with, well, you can, we can go back to the beginning of time and blame the previous, you know, office and, uh, you know, the previous situation. That's not going to help the problem. That's not going to fix the problem. That's not going to get us anywhere. That's not going to get us to where we are here today in this room. That's right. So, so I would say, and to, I'm, I'm really kind of trying to finish David's point with this, is uh, where it's not about this administration or that administration. At what point do you say... I'm going to judge this individual, this candidate, this president, whatever their position is, 
uh, not based on a previous administration that they're a lesser evil mm -hmm. or whatever else, but purely on the standards of my own moral integrity and, and the value of what, where I'm trying to live my life at. And if neither candidate, just because I have an R typically behind where I cast my vote, uh, that doesn't mean that the R owns my vote, right? They don't get my vote simply because I typically have voted that way. And so at some point, I had to, you know, for me, I reached the point, and this is where I piss off all my, you know, R friends who voted, you know, Trump. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I got my sock game. game. It's all <laughs> point. Right? I got a little sock game here. Uh, so anyway. Sorry, no, well, sorry, I digress. Yeah. So, so my point was to say that I've reached a point where I'm, I'm like, look, if you want to vote for Trump because your position is that he is the only way we're going to beat Hillary, I get where you're coming from, right? I'm just saying for me, I'm going to stand before God at some point in my life, and God's going to say, what did you do to uphold the beliefs and values of the, the faith that you say you're walking in, mm -hmm. right? And does this candidate represent your best choice for advancing those morals and values in the world around you, right? And I, I, I don't have to answer for any of my friends who voted for Trump. I don't have to answer for a single one of those. My wife voted for Trump, right? There was no big fight in the House, right? right? right. Uh, she said why she was going to vote for him. I said why I wasn't, and that's where it went. That was it, right? Yeah. I respected her opinion. She respected mine, and off we went, right? So that's where, I, you know, for me, I got to the point where I'm like, neither one of these candidates represent what I believe that the moral fiber of my faith is, and for that matter, what the country was founded on. And so I can't vote for this candidate. So I move forward So let that. me ask y'all this. This is a big question, and I'm going to direct it to Steve. How, because I'm, it's, it's your turn to talk. I mean, like, you got some stuff on your heart. I know it's like, I'm about to hit somebody. I'm good. I'm uh, good. good. Oh, I wouldn't no, I'm just kidding. That. I'm just kidding. Real quick. Well, I want to ask, I want to ask our audience. How much power does the president really have? Is there really, the, do, do the votes really and truly matter? Because when you talk about the popular vote, or not, not the popular vote, what's that other? The electoral, electoral. The electoral and, and we're not even going to talk, we're not going to get into that. We don't have time for that today. But I <laughs> want could. you to, I want you to think, I want you to talk about, <laughs> I want the audience to, to chime in and let's talk about the United States of America and the United States of America, comma, Inc. The business side, the the ink side, where the president, in my opinion, doesn't even matter who it is. I don't care who y'all give a damn who y'all pick, because they're all in so many ways a puppet for oh, yeah. who's paying for the for the country to be ran and, anyway. And, the and country is not run by the president. The Federal so Reserve. Everybody. Yes. It's, it's absolutely better. No, again, this is where we're all going to get to an agreement and point. The Fed. Yeah, it, it, it's an oligarchy. Okay. Uh, so yeah. I'm 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 going to get a chance to engage Cindy. Real, yes. in a nice way. S save it because I'm I'm not Boy. making any point oh, other than to say, Rebecca, thank yes, you for tuning in. Yes, Kate, Kate, the winos. Cat, Cat Sanford. I'm sorry, say yeah. Cat. Thanks Kat. for hi winos. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Thank y'all for tuning in. Kat said, have y'all watched House of Cards, Underwood is Evil? Okay. I don't know. Well, I haven't House watched cards, it, so I don't know. House of Cards. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to say hi. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. Be sure to, to let us know you're here and watching. If you have a comment, chime in. Steve, your point. Go ahead. Okay. Several. <laughs> Once again, we have, we have been um, thrown on the table, this, this idea, this concept of having to choose between the uh, lesser of the two evils. I have clearly on other shows and other conversations I've had uh, outside of this uh, group where I reject having to choose between the evil of the two lessers. So it's not a capitulatory position that I take. It's one that where Cindy, where she may have doubts about her power as an individual, the individual is the power. And you yourself know that 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 you do have a process and what randall likes to say well you know you just lost a bunch of people steve on this this concert this this convention process and all this other stuff uh, i'm not i'm not getting cross with randall randall has a great input on this but our primaries chose these two people however it's played and we had to make a decision pre-trump who runs the country who runs the country well it, uh, there's a lot of influence between us and those that we elect to office. I know this personally. And so 
where we have to engage. We need more people engaging. It doesn't matter where you fall, like, uh, you know, an R or a D. you got to engage. you got to get active. You don't just vote. You get out there and you talk to these people that are representing you. They're there to serve you. Right. They seem to lose that concept. And equally, we seem to lose that concept as well. So my mission in life from a political standpoint is to duplicate myself. I do not care. No, actually, I take that back. I do care where you Steve where Harris. you fall politically. Okay, I do. I do. Really, I do. Hashtag that sucker. I don't know what that means, but okay. <clears throat> I, just, I, just, I just think that we need to take up a little bit more responsibility in what we do with this country. There's a great there, old quote to your point that yes. says, we have the country that we deserve. Yes. Right? And that is, I absolutely believe it's true because ap the, the average American, average American is a go-along to get-along person that says, just don't bother me in my nine to five. I'm going to go home, chill out, watch TV, and, and that's where my day-to-day -day life is. We don't get involved politically. We don't get involved socially um, as a nation. That's what you look at the percentage of people that vote and all that sort of thing. Um, and, and so consequently, we have the nation that we deserve. Um, mm. Depends on what part of the nation that you're talking about. Being a fish out of water here in Texas from Washington, D.C., um, you say contact your Congress people, they represent you. Um, that's fruitless for somebody like me here in Texas because it's so gerrymandered that my Congress people don't represent me and are no, have no interest in talking to me or listening to what I have to say. They proved that by avoiding the town hall meetings and things that have been going on since Trump was elected. You say that the nation, okay, there are parts of the nation that don't get involved, but I guarantee you the Mid-Atlantic region where I'm from is heavily involved because it is a non-partisan, sure it's partisan, but but it's it's a more open dialogue, it's less suppressive, and um, again, just having experienced that and experiencing this, it's night and day. The people up there do get involved, do contact your Congress people, because even if it's a Republican and you're a Democrat, or it's a Democrat and you're a Republican, they'll listen to you, they'll be influenced, they'll have their town hall meetings, they may cross the aisle and things like that. That doesn't happen here. Flat well, out, it doesn't my, happen My here interjection on that, though, Congress, was because this kind of ties back standpoint. into the point you made earlier when you said, well, the people against Trump say this, and then, then the people, you know, or the people against Obama say this, the people against Trump say this, and then you go back to the previous president. Well, and that presumes, and this is what I'm hearing over, as, as a constitutionist, I hear that 80% of the picture is being missed with that dialogue because just because I oppose Trump doesn't mean I voted for Hillary. And just because I oppose Hillary doesn't mean I supported Bush, right? Mm -hmm. And just because I, I don't, didn't exactly. like Obama doesn't mean that I supported Bush. Right. We, the, the last thing closest to a constitutional president that we've had, in my opinion, mm -hmm. is Ronald Reagan. And, and the thing is, that's why I He's love... A good actor. Well, okay, but you say that, but let me tell you something. See, when people say that, they, they say that to, to deliver, like you just did, a backhanded compliment. He's a good communicator. He's a great actor. But here's the reality. You <laughs> like the fact that he brought all those drugs into our country? Ronald Reagan. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not getting bogged down into the Not that part. We're not going to do that part. He had a good no, foreign no, no. policy. What, what I'm saying <laughs> is that, that Ronald Reagan. He brought down the wall. Because we, we can all, that's what I'm saying, we can get. Wrapped around the axle on, a on, on different issues. There's yes. some issues that I would not agree with Reagan. Okay. 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 So which, which one? Uh, there's there's well, uh, in in hindsight, it was a mistake that he did amnesty. In hindsight, that was a mistake. Right? Big time. So, but but also understood that that uh, that at that time that that issue was being visited at that point, there was an agreement made between the Democrats and the Republicans that was violated, and Ronald Reagan was one thing he was known for was a great negotiator. And he never would have issued a second deal it's after the swag. first deal had been violated. Yes, okay? swag. He absolutely yeah. did. And, and one thing a lot of people don't know about Reagan, too, not to take us off the rails here, but Reagan did stem a takeover of Hollywood from the Communist Party. That's a fact. Really? Hollywood? Yeah. That's his plan, though. That's, that's his plan, too. Again, uh, right. But that's where he got actor. his background to be a governor, and that's where he got his experience to be president. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, and we can do that. When we come out of the entertainment field, you can go run for president. You're an, entertain you're an entertainer. What do it you, doesn't matter. What do you play? The, it doesn't matter. The, no, I just want to know. Seriously. The qualifications for president are to be a citizen over the age of 35. President. That's right. Any of us could run for president. Yes. If you're a natural-born citizen over the age of 35 years, you can run for president. And if you've got the gift, 
the gifts that are required to run for president, to have the savviness to speak to the people and persuade the people through your rhetoric, right. through ethos, pathos, and logos, and you appeal to those different characteristics, then you win. But what it all but comes to, well, do you come really run point. any damn thing? That's my, my that's point. my, I'm still, nobody's answering that question. Well, I know, but that, this, I, I answer your question. I'm going to finish my point. That too. Yeah, my point is that that's why I'm a huge fan of the Constitution Party. Because okay. every party, I respect that. every party ties itself to an ideology. And what have we seen throughout history? And I'm sorry, Steve, I know you heard me make this point before. I sound like a no, broken record. No. But, but the reality is, you can identify yourself as libertarian. You can identify yourself as a liberal. You can identify yourself as a conservative. What does that mean anymore? What does it mean? A conservative these days, Trump claims to be a conservative. The GOP <laughs> supports Trump. Is Trump a conservative? You'll have a huge debate over that. We're going to talk about pre-presidential Trump. Well, because I know pre-presidential Trump, he was supporting all the liberals, right? Look at it. You want to see where a man's heart I is? I kind of liked him checkbook. before he was president. I bought all his books. Well, again, because I'm he was I'm a liberal. A serial entrepreneur. <laughs> but I believe but my Catholic. point is that when you take He's all Catholic, those ideologies, sure. he also supported a lot of liberals. You, you can be whatever. Monetarily. You can be whatever ideology you want to be. Right. But you bring it into the umbrella of the Constitution, and that becomes your check, your balance, right? And there's a lot of things we can talk about with a proper understanding of the Constitution that we can all agree should not be going on. One great question I saw today on social media. Why do we have a terrorist nation that we're giving millions of dollars to and, and fighter jets? They, they've been proclaimed a terrorist nation, and I forget who it was, but we've been, we were giving them fighter jets and money. Talking about Saudi Arabia? Yes. So there it is. That's but not so now, now, what I can say to you right now, David, Oil. I could say, I could say, okay, well, yeah, well, what what if, well, we're, we got that. Oil. But then you, you like Reagan, but what about what Reagan did with the drug cartel? With um, what's that show that I really like? But, but that, in what's that vein, name? you're Come you're, on, help me out. you're repeating allegations in, in, that are not in, founded. Oh, not founded. Yeah. They're, they're unfounded allegations. Do you remember, what, what, do you remember what, Oliver North? What do you mean? I do remember what, Oliver North. You need, do you need statistical data? The guy stood up and told all about it. Um, what you're talking about. Yeah, we're peer -review off the rails. Article on, <laughs> you need peer-reviewed articles. Well, more articles. than off the rails, it's it's multiple people talking at once. That, mm -hmm. didn't, that didn't fit. I'm sorry. So I'll we got to let people address each other's points. So. Can we get uh, that? Don't let's have the little discussion here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the discussion is fine. It's it's when there's three people discussing. I got melanin. Hashtag melanin. So I know I get really emotional. Hashtag melanin. Stephanie, where you at, girl? Where you at? Oh, Thank you for the comment. You know, I'm not taking dress. sides on any of and this because I, my, I know uh, my, yeah, um, we're, we're all on the same wash side. Wash and go. My first yeah, wash and go, we're, everybody. We're, we're discussing some things that, that, yeah, that are so very dynamic, actually, uh, a lot of history in it, and we all believe in one way, shape, form, or another uh, the perspective that we've had over the last 20, 25, 30 years. And, you know, it, it's, it's difficult in an hour to oh my God, yes. bring these things out, and and that's the value of this forum. I mean, I don't want anybody that's watching this to think that that we're just like any other program that anybody has seen. We are normal people with very dynamic backgrounds, very extensive life experiences, and that I think some of us practically geniuses. I'm I just going to say, well, yeah. hashtag <laughs> genius in this piece. Hashtag genius. I'm not naming any names. But I ain't I'm calling no names. I'm just saying. If I'm we were saying. to weigh, if we were to weigh our collective IQ in this room, including Bobby, Ten. mountainous. Ten. It'd be huge. <laughs> we, we, It'd be we huge. Would, it just explode. We would be putting a strain on the floor. It huge. Would just explode. Please, yeah. please stop. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it would be huge. Come on, man. Hashtag genius. Hashtag yeah. genius. I'm just saying that that the the premise of this show is not to get anybody away. It's just to let's let's talk about these things. I'm not disagreeing. I just I think it's more important. I'm sorry. Well, that's what my wife thinks. She's probably watching this right now, thinking it's it's okay. You know what she's gonna tell you? We we good. You know what she's gonna tell you? She's gonna say, okay, back off. Real quick. All mine. Real quick, jumping oh, in. Here she, here she is. Couple yeah. comments. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not yet. Yeah. Couple comments. Stephanie's chiming in with some great comments, so I want to make sure we get these. First of all, she said she loves your dress and melanin on fleek. Okay. So, right. <laughs> 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 her with that one. How does that yes. go? It's, 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 it's the it's like pound this. sign. Pound no, you're on right. gang signs. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. The United yet. States. No, the United States oh, government is a politically astute bully. Fueled by a power called capitalism. Hence, why we have relationships with countries that serve our capitalistic foundations 
before anything else. Also, what makes us one of the greatest, yes. the greatest country in the world. Too. So, yeah, the I, I was just going to say, capitalism. The inherent I, I, evil is when when you have corruption within yes. capitalism. Well, yes, the misperception, the misunderstanding of capitalism. We need to define. Can we define capitalism? The true meaning of capitalism in this for the for our viewers. What does capitalism mean? Well, e economic oh professor will tell you that. Serial entrepreneur on fleek, hashtag. Yeah. You have the opportunity in, the com in a country like the United States, in Houston, Texas. Now, we're here in Houston. If you can't come to Houston with your talent, with your skill, with your gift, with your information, and start yourself a business and be an entrepreneur and do your damn thing, then I don't know what to tell you. Free because economy. this is a free economy. We are. You have all the freedoms that you need. It's not about can you go get a job or somebody holding you down or nobody's holding you down. You're holding yourself down. Amen. There so listen, yes. I will Amen. talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna go to, to his point and to a couple points that were made. Stephanie's point, this sort of thing. You said that capitalism is not in and of itself inherently evil. All right, it's not it's, all right, it's it's not capitalism that is evil. John Adams said um, why he spoke to our nation being a moral society. He said we have no system of government capable of reining in the unbridled passions of an immoral society. Amen. Mm -hmm. right? Our Constitution was created only for a moral and religious society. Those were his words. Mm -hmm. right? Like it or not, mm -hmm. that was their frame of mind. They created a government. His frame of mind. Yeah, his frame of mind. Yeah, yeah, it was we, theirs. We can, they agreed. That was the definitely. Who were they? The, the founding fathers. The, uh, of the founding fathers. Who were the founding fathers? fathers? And what were their agendas? Of the founding fathers, the majority view was a Christian worldview. Like it or not. And as what a is fact. Christian, though? John, I've got to take you there, baby. I got that, that's, to. That's fine. We can, not, I mean, and, I, and, I'm a, and I used to be a Christian. But, now, but, you're talking to an ordained minister here. But I'm going to cut right to the chase because, because I know the question uh, you're asking. And, and the challenge with the question yeah, I'm you're asking. I'm going to take you all the way back. No, no, no. The challenge with the question you're asking is that you're presupposing that because the, these founders were Christian, that they had to be perfect. We didn't create this country in a perfect world, no, no. and they weren't perfect people. No, 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 no. But, but when I you look at the principles that were instituted. I'm just saying I wasn't at that table. Agree. Me and my group, me but, and my crew were not in so that let me conversation give you, let me give you one all. of the biggest pieces of so evidence. So I don't buy into the whole Christian dumb. Aside from the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, one of the biggest pieces of evidence that this is a Christian nation and that our founders intended to promote Christianity within our nation was the fact that Benjamin Rush was the man almost universally selected to be the one who was the father of our public education system. A man who had written for decades about the necessity <coughs> of the Bible being taught in schools. And in fact, was the Bible taught in schools? Yes, it was. For decades, for centuries. Let's do this. Because the fact. Let's bring the Bible, the Bible, the fact, the Bible in. Just a, an outside question. What does it matter? Because it speaks to oh, morality. It, it speaks because, to his point. Because I've heard you guys bring this up in previous shows, and Joe and I have discussed it ad nauseum by messaging and things like that. Who cares? Well, it's central to the point. Yeah. But, it's, it's which, not which is what Joe was country, though. That's what Joe was saying. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah, not that is to our country. So what is let, central? Our country, country has become so diverse since then. But let him finish that, his point. Okay. Yeah, I, I was going to well, say. I didn't I, interject on this point. I was just no. It's 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 a it's a it's a valid question. So. It's a perfectly fine question. Uh, in fact, I think it's a very logical question. Right? Yes. And agreed. and that's why I said the quote that I did. It was addressing your question before the question came up, right? Now I'm confused. All right, that's fine. I'm here to explain. The wine works. The, product, the, product the truth works. serum is working. Yes. It works. My point was, whether we like it or not, we have a construct to our system of government. And that construct was based on a worldview. We don't have to like it. We don't have to agree. We can, uh, we can say, I want to reject it all, whatever. But there was a absolutely a very universally agreed upon with very little disagreement mm -hmm. amongst the original guys who set up the construct of the country. They weren't about establishing a religion. They weren't saying we're going to have a church of the United States. All that. That's not what I'm getting at. But they had a universal worldview that they agreed on. And that's why someone who was very instrumental in the founding of the country, the president, and all this sort of thing, and its original documents, said what he said. We have no system of government capable of dealing with the unbridled passions of an immoral society. Our form of government was only created for a religious and moral people. And he said that within a very specific definition of who he meant. 
right? And so in other words, if this may have all sucked, it may have all failed, it may all be horrible, whatever. I mean, that's almost irrelevant to the point. He was saying, we came up with an idea for government based on a certain body of people, and we're building a system of government. A certain body of people. We don't agree on who that is, but right. I, we can talk about we it. Don't? I, no. How do we know we don't? We never talked about it. Because you've made comments, like you've made some very specific not comments. To, not, a, not at you. No, I know, I know. No. I just said, so, you said my people weren't at the table. My, my group wasn't at the table. Which is not so true. I, there were I, black I, founders. I, I, there were black founders at the table. But, but, you know. You know Christians. But, and, you know, this, that's a, it's a. talking about a religion, not a race. Wait, and that's, I was going to say, that's, that's funny. A, I was going to say, hold, hold up, hold up, well, side comments. I, I will love to talk, uh, to bring that conversation oh, out to off, off, off air. Right? Right? <laughs> no, no, even on the show. It's, oh, it's, okay, it's, okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, everything. We can talk about everything. We're going because to first of all, I love and respect I'm you. I love and respect you. That's yeah. why we're here. Yes, right. absolutely. You can't come up in here and with, with drama. Right. We're, I, I, we can only do the drama with Right, right, right. 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 What, what is it? This is my friend. Leave the chips on our shoulders outside the door. Outside That's the right. door. This, this is, is all love, this, peace, and joy. This is my friend who I'm in business with, and I adore this person. So to be clear, all these comments are in context of that. Yes. And, and, and the, this is the idea. You know what? They, it, America right now has a black and white issue. We can't talk. We can't. We need more have, wine. We can't have serious conversation with, like, without terms like racist being thrown out and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, you know what? I can disagree with your view without it being racial. I mean, oh, my right. gosh. You know, <laughs> we were playing a game. Oh, that's about to say. Oh my God. I was just about to bring the game up. We were playing a game a couple weeks ago, and I'm trying to tell the person, look, I mean, you don't have to I like the rules, but the, the guy game. said the rules at the opening of the game, I and I got called a racist. I was about to are get into about, the... Are you talking about the wine tasting? Not the, the wine yeah. tasting. At, you weren't, I don't think you, you were at this there. one. Yeah. This was at Unwind. And, yeah. Same uh, game, though. Same game. And somebody called you and racist? And he or? became racist, and I became wow. pissed off, and about to go against my brother, my... Oh, my. Hey, Joe, to, I told to you to leave your shoes at no, to support Joe because the game is what it is. But because we were in a, a certain area of town, it goes both ways. It and, and yes, you know, yeah, so it goes both ways. Is, it, goes it, both ways. It, it speaks to. Yes. Let me just tell you what that speaks to. So we need to talk. We have to talk. We that's, have that's to have this yes. because it just goes to the fact that that is an uh, uh, unhealed situation. That's it is. Un, that brother was not healed, and he doesn't. And he and he took uh, he took the wrong way when he went way left. On the rules of the game, mm -hmm. left, right, center. We love playing this game. Those of you that are part of the wine gang across the country, and you played the game with us. We started it. Shouts out to my partner Theo Moore, um, who brought the game into the wine gang, so that we could have, you know, not just drink wine and get drunk, but then we <laughs> we do that too. But we have a great time afterwards, and we play the game. I didn't see anybody I, drunk. No, you, you weren't at that. You weren't at this no, event. It was a, oh, it's a different one. Yeah, yeah no, this one. That we went. Yeah, we went hard in the. Pain so many events. So many games. So, so many. many the, yeah. You were. Y'all yeah, left early. Y'all left. Just yeah, we left. Early. We left, we left right before the game. Yeah. I mean, I I thought I was coming got, to, to. This dude to, got so freaking mad because, the the bottom line is he had to sit his ash down, and Joe was still in the game, and it was just you know Joe, I, brother, I love you. <laughs> oh. I felt so He's bad. I'm like, to the brother out there so, that got all mad I'm about like, the group. I'm like the, 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 the and very Theo, minority Theo, Theo person talk, in the group. He's still talking about, Theo, if you out there, I know you're watching, you need to chime in, bro, yeah. and, and talk about this a little bit, about how it, it just goes both ways. Bring, bring it back to the constitutional thing and ask a question. That's oh, right. we're talking that ties, constitution? That ties in with, no, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the, 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 the tangent. Whole, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The yeah. repartee. Right. But something I was just <laughs> thinking about, yes, was... It, it, My chance to be French. So you, you're talking open, the constitution, open. okay, and we're talking religion, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have kind of a, a, a two-sided question, mm -hmm. okay? All right. One is, so... You have the Old Testament. You have the Old Testament, and my red letter Christian <coughs> friends out there might appreciate this uh, dialogue. Chris Webb. Um, what time you, is it, by the way? You uh, have about fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Okay. 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 So, so, the Old Testament with so all the, the six hundred plus so the, laws. So the Old right. Testament, and then Jesus came, right. okay, and created a new covenant, right. okay, which kind of changed the Old Testament. And you have the Constitution, and you're talking about the founders, and they wanted to be a Christian nation, et cetera. And then you have the Civil Rights Amendment that came and prohibited discrimination on the basis of religion and other things. Did did that make a difference? Did that change anything about the, about, the, about the because do you consider the Civil Rights Amendment part of the Constitution, or do you not consider the Civil Rights Amendment part of the Constitution? Because 
and changed it. Who are you asking first? Yeah, I'm looking at you because you're, you're sitting right it's across from me. Right, I, I we've been making so, eye contact. I don't know why that is. But, uh, <laughs> but y'all are sitting right across from me. I don't either. Not that there's anything there's wrong with that. Something. Cue the music. Hashtag uh, something uh, on that. I'm, I'm, I'm simply going to say that the, the process got us to that point with the Civil Rights Mo uh, Act. The process worked. Yes. It was the people on both sides of the equation that screwed it up. And if we don't sit there and look at, it's not the Constitution that's the problem. All these people want to change it. They want to, um, uh, you know, amendments are, are, are good processes. But what I'm saying is it's not the documents. It's the people we're electing to office that are screwing things up. And until we collectively, for bad term, bad worst term ever, until we collectively realize that these people are what are the problem. Somebody went after and tried to kill a bunch of them this week, okay? That's never happened before. That's, of course it has. <laughs> I'm just saying, until we grow up and realize that these people are not above reproach, we will see a general improvement in the population. Everybody will start to say, okay, we've got sane people there doing what they're supposed to do, what we have elected them to do. Once that starts happening, it may, it, we may be all be dead and planted in the ground well, before that happens. Have we ever had a good have we ever had a, an administration? Have we, I'm sorry. You're, you're talking about, have while, while, sure. wait, 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 <laughs> That's a good so one. the okay. process is still on. I can agree with you on that. Cheers. All right, but the process is to good. address. We're good, so. uh, we've had a bunch of great comments, uh, and this is what happens when we get great, lively dialogue going on. We can't jump to the comments. Uh, so while everybody's taking a sip and enjoying their fan, I gotta say this is for this is the this good, is stuff. good stuff. Like the <laughs> best hey, Chardonnay I've ever had. I can't. I can't wait till we get to the reviews. What do you call the um the month the uh, sommelier. The sommelier that are picking out these wines yeah. for direct sellers. Holy cow. Big freaking shout out to you. Dave, I love you. PJ, I love you. Uh, wow. Man. All right, like, so yeah, best it. Chardonnay I've ever had. Okay, so uh, oh, comments. Chardonnay. Yeah, this is a Chardonnay, yeah. Uh, the Founding Fathers, Stephanie said this, the Founding hey, Fathers Stephanie. were not Christians, they are deists. Stephanie, we disagree. There was only three deists in that entire group, and one of those is questionable. We disagree. Sorry, we disagree. Yep. Uh, we? Uh, no. Who are you speaking for? <laughs> because I'm going to do research, disagree. Stephanie, because I know Stephanie did her research, and I know my sister is so going to bring it. She's so you're saying it. I didn't do my research. No, All right, I'm not I see saying how it is. I see how it is. I'm not saying you're already saying I'm saying, views. I'm saying that maybe no. somebody's research is not credible. It has not been peer reviewed. Yeah, yeah. It's when, not when, scholarly. When one of the I, most, can, I can name the when three. When one of the least religious is the one who stood up in the middle of the Constitutional Convention and called everyone to prayer. Uh, that that kind of blows the whole deist argument as it's being presented out of the water. It was actually Ben Franklin who said, "If if a if a bird cannot fall to the ground without his notice, can a nation rise without his aid?" He was considered one of the least religious of the founders. Now that if if he's the least religious of the founders, mm -hmm. then then that kind of your deist argument as it's being applied is blown to smithereens. Wait, 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 that's very foundational in Christian, Christian a Christian dumb. worldview. I would say that it's definitely a person that didn't believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It definitely would fall outside of this Orthodox Christian worldview. Absolutely. There may be other views that are also critical, but that's certainly one of them. Uh, Kat said many of the founders were fleeing religious persecution in other countries. Absolutely. They didn't want a Church of England. They were very adamant about that. Um, that's where the whole comments, separation of okay. church and state, comes from. It was from a letter to a, a preacher who had written to the president then and asked, are we going to have an established church? No, there's always going to be a separation of church and state. That's where that whole separation of church and state comment came that's from. our next topic. Should, we, All right. com, should it be all um, one? Stephanie then I'm laughed sure. about, she said, everything is racial. Lol, she was laughing about me said that. Everything's racial. Why is that to be racial? <laughs> yes. 
Joe got in his feelings on that one. Joe got in his feelings on that one because everything is like, why does it have to be racial? I can't just disagree with you without it being melanin based in my argument. Oh, I'm like, I'm just trying to tell you what. We're talking about the game. I'm like, I didn't even establish the rules. No, on that one, he was just flat out wrong. I'm like, the other black guy in the room established the rules. I'm just telling you what he said. Why am I racist? That dude who happens to be an African American was wrong. All right, yes, yes. All right, so sorry, I'm, bro. I'm gonna I mean, I love you, right. right now. Whew. Yes, through the roof. I love right. that you was wrong. Don't do no drive by now. Don't, uh, don't come uh, <laughs> Stephanie said. Anybody got time for that? Stephanie said you can disagree. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson was a deist. Yes, I said there were three: Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Paine, Benjamin <laughs> Franklin. Those were the three. The rest were freaking pastors and deacons. I'm sorry. But those we are don't have big guys. But I've got to interject those here. Those are pretty big guys. But they, I've got to interject they here. Are. Hold on a Absolutely. I've got to interject are. here. This is, this is hugely important, okay? Because, yes, Thomas Jefferson had some very strange views about <coughs> Christianity. Very, he was he very did. eccentric, strange? to say the least, okay? But as president, what was labeled Christian, yes. But as president, he viewed it as his duty, as president, to attend church which was held in the Capitol building on Sundays. Sorry, that again blows apart your your deist argument. Okay? Yes, he had. I, I've I've heard it referred to that Thomas Jefferson had a I'm loose a, I'm a Bible. Jesus follower, so don't get me wrong. Oh no no, I'm not. It has nothing. Don't that's that's the point. If we went to Saudi Arabia, none of us would argue that we were going to a Muslim nation. But I'm not. We're going to a Muslim religion, nation. And to okay? do what? That's not my and belief. Then, that's what they are. Are you gonna love on those Muslims? Or are you gonna bomb them? I'm gonna love them first, and then I'm gonna bomb. But no, but no, my thing is, is just, they were escaping. I'm just saying. 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 They okay. no. They were escaping government implementation <laughs> of organized religion. We're gonna go get the government was peer reviewed using, articles that hold on a minute. that discuss this okay. topic. And we will, and this is where we're I'm talking about. We, we, we're we gonna can, bring the information. We can go back and forth yeah. for days about the about our sources of information. Did research and he, I did my research. We got genius. They were escaping the government using the church as an arm of itself to enforce government will. Right. That's what they were seeking. That was the Church of England. They were seeking freedom of religious worship and the religious worship they were pursuing. And this is what, what the point I was going to make earlier. The terms, what, what's happened in, uh, over the course of time, like these days, if I said, uh, Steve is a really religious person, well, that actually has a negative connotation these days. These days, that's seen as he's, he's real judgmental, he's real pious, he views himself nose in the air, he's in his book all the time, and no one else is as good of a churchgoer as he is. Which is pretty true. Okay, but that's... Not about Steve, about... No. Uh, Thank that's, you. That's where I disagree. Steve. No, that, term, that term has been shifted over the course of time, as many terms have been shifted over the course of time. Because in the days of our founding, if someone asked of another person, they said, uh, you know, that Joe, is he a religious person? They're saying, is he a man of moral character? Is he a Christian? Is he, is he someone who stands up, stands in the gap for what is right? And is a man of but, God. But back then can they you didn't be, can do you be that. A man that stands in the gap of what's right and not be a Christian. That's that's a separate question altogether. Yes, I, I believe you can. I think I think there's an inherent. That's part of that. What the evidence that shows us as created beings. When it says man is made in the image of God, they're not saying we look just like him. They're saying we were we have a moral imprint on our hearts. It's in there. It's in there. You can't if we get away able... from it. That's why we struggle, and that's why when you get off of the grain and you're going against the grain, that's why you feel it in your spirit. That's and, why you're vexed. That's and why. So on that point, we that. we clean yeah, glasses. You know, you know, we're out of this wine. We have plenty more wine, but it's out of the room. That's another lesson we need to learn is to bring that extra wine into the room. When it gets like Because we kill it. it. Do they have two liter bottles? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've got a great book into this entire process here that we we're discussing about. Those guys back in the day, this is what they did. They would get up and they'd have their breakfast and they'd put on their garb and like their silky nose and they they go so to... Oh, these are the guys with the white wigs? The, the white wigs, yeah, the whole big... I mean, you put it on there like you want. Well, why has it got to be a white wig? But, well, anyway, what they Shows, did is they sat you there. Know, why did they, they do the white together. doll and the black doll? <laughs> it's all funny, funny. Funny. Cut his mic. You, you, when they I, asked, I, which, I, I, well, well, what doll is nicer? I'm sorry, <laughs> Cindy. You, Joe I'm, did this to I know. Joe I'm, did it. He I'm set you up. I'm him up after class. Okay, go ahead. Anyway, I'm what I'm saying is these guys got together. White doll, black doll. Which one? And they fought this thing up. They they delivered. They agreed. They disagreed. They 
they they probably went to fisticuffs a few times, but you know, at the end of the day, they they got away from this this thing. They went to a pub. They knocked back a few pints. Right. And they they worked on a few things. They said, well, all right. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, you know, and then and then they would they go home. On what happened when they? Okay, go ahead. They went <laughs> no, home. They went home. Went you know what they Stephanie did? just right. Stephanie wants to know if I just touched the black woman's one hair. Of them to a T. <laughs> oh, you have to. I touched her shoulder. Put themselves her shoulder, in their Stephanie. Shoes. You got to put themselves yourself in their shoes. If we had a time machine, go back and watch what they would did. You 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 could almost. Well, picture we be, it. What, 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 what do we think we might see? If we we would see them get up. We would fly on the wall. Go do their constant their 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 Congress and. And come up with this idea for a, a, a separation from the crown, and they would disagree. They would agree. They would have their little factions, and then they would go and knock down a few pints at a pub before they went home. And when they went home, I this know. is the most sobering thing that I can. I, I you, you have to understand that this is what they did. I know what Thomas Jefferson. They did. they went home <laughs> and they made musket balls because they knew a fight was coming. There was a collective need to do this because they knew somebody across the across the pond there was not going to like what they were doing. No matter how many so, points they put down. They, they're that's gonna, right. They're, they knew a fight was It's a nationalism, yeah. I disagree. Yeah. You don't think that, that that's what they did? No. Because well, no, no, obviously the outcome what they, is what we're doing what right they, now that we're, we're talking not, about. I'm not it. saying that's what they did. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm... Pre- I'm projecting myself and in, in thinking you're saying that's the solution now. So maybe I'm misreading. No, that no, that's, that's not what I was doing with that. I'm okay. just saying that, that what we're doing right now, we're benefiting from the what they sacrificed back in the day. Sure. And until we get back to the base formula here and we look at the dynamics and how how absolutely perverse our our processes have, have been, we, we don't we're we're I guess we're just spinning our wheels sometimes. I, I will say, as a uh, for me, as a so far, you know, so fast after a while. Oh, we got okay. Let's go. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's yours. Uh, yes. Exactly. Here, here. All right. Um, Let's I will say, it. as a closing thought for me on that, that summing up that, I I will say that, um, uh, struggling for words here, uh, that. Prior to this this last generation of America, I think there was definitely more a a, a, a nationalistic, you know, like we're proud to be Americans, we're we're one people. I definitely think that was more common um, prior to our last generation, and I think whether that generation or administration. Uh, no, last, last generation. generation. Yeah. yeah, I mean, look yeah, at definitely. September 11th and the aftermath of that. American flags all over the place. Nationalism was was very high. Um, I, I, I've flown an American flag every day since, so I'm not sure that it went away. But well, well, hang on. Let, 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 well, let me finish. That's one. Let, let me, yeah, <laughs> I was just that's most, one. Right. Um, most of my neighborhood too. So. And, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's good or bad. Mm-hmm. What I more of the observation is, I think that there was definitely more of a, of a united spirit as a, as in I'm an American, proud to be an American. There wasn't the 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 slash American, European, American, whatever. It was just, I'm American. And I think that's definitely become more prevalent in our last generation. Again, to be very clear, I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying I think that's the case. And the, the one of the symptoms of that more individualistic uh, nature is that we, we've now dealt with more of separate identities and, and consequently more clashing. Again, not saying that's bad. I'm saying that perhaps that's a segue to an evolution of learning to do this more. Right. Uh, to, to learn how to, if, if we are going to have these separate identities or whatever as Americans, uh, that the natural evolution of that progress is to realize that you have to learn how to disagree. Don't hang up the phone when you disagree. My plug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Plug. Plug. That was very, Don't very personal. Up. Family Don't values. log off the show just because you disagree. Stay tuned. To hang out for the rest of the show. As always, Stephanie, Stephanie, you had so many good comments. I just didn't have time oh, to get to them. I, I loved it. You always add great commentary while you're on the line with the us. Bomb.com. Cat. Uh, you're, thank you for tuning in and being a part of the show. We love you guys. I will and be Kat. at Cat's Lunch and Learn. I think it is it next Friday? Or Kat, with, post, post, post in the feed. Post your Lunch and Learn, please, Post Kat. in the feed we when your next Lunch and Learn is going to be. Some events that organize. And we have events coming up. So That's right. Close out. That's right. <coughs> the Shameless Plug the event. 
Yeah, absolutely. We need to. Closing show, shameless plug. Next, next week, this is huge. It really is huge. It's going to be the first wine show ever, to, the, the Wine No Wine Show ever to take place, not on a Friday. Next Friday's show, great audience, as, or great uh, cast of members as always, but we are doing a special edition show, mm -hmm. Saturday. And it's going to be a show on entrepreneurship. Yes. And we're going to have just uh, you know, a cast of very elite people, I would say. Uh, very successful people in life. Mm. Uh, uh, Multi-millionaires. Uh, a guest on the show is, who's built a, a, a nine-figure company from the wow. ground up. From the ground up. Highly successful. Done it more than once. That type of thing. Uh, very successful people. We're going to do that live live at a wine tasting event. Woo! So next Saturday, we're going to be meeting. You guys need to... Zoom to, Barrel. Zoom Barrel. That's right. That's the name of the place. The wine tasting is going to happen from 6 to 9. We're going to be live at the venue uh, starting at 4 o'clock. We're going to be talking and hanging out, but the show goes live at 5 like always. So be sure to tune in next Saturday for a very special edition of the Wine No Wine they Show. They want to be a part of the live studio audience. If you want to be a part of the live studio audience, we're going to have a live audience right there happening. I rock do, and roll. I do. That's I right. Do. Ooh, ooh. Be sure to be there at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Zoom Barrel. It's on um, Kirkendall. Kirkendall. Yeah. Yes, Kirkendall. That's right. That's right. um, That's right. So we'll, we'll be posting about it. it. Just pay attention. We'll be posting about right. it. Inbox us. Or That's or right. Inbox us. Be a part of the show. So now we're going to get to the, the, the final bookend of the show here, the closing. We're going to rate this wine. Where did I put the wine bottle? I lost I have it. it. I, I took oh. it. Oh. I was reading it. Ken Sorry. was, Ken was no. killing the bottle. Ken was, was killing it. Was, I went off camera. Wait, there's right? more. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? There's a sip in there. Look at that. She got the last sip. It. Bring it out. Bring it out. That's right. Right, right. right. Uh, tap it. There you go. All right. Look at wow. that. I did it last show. Some... I'll do it this show. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> It looks like Not it, shy. it's a crazy name, Yanka Lila, right? That's what it looks like, Yanka Lila. But it's pronounced Yuga Lila. I don't know why it's an Australian thing, but Yanka Lila. Chardonnay, southeastern coast of Australia. Man, I tell you what, we're going, we're going to go to uh, David over here, let him start the ratings off. Chardonnay, David, tell us what you thought of it. All right, so normally I drink red. I'm, oh. I'm, a, I'm a red fan myself, uh, typically Merlots, Chiantis, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that, that's really the only thing holding me back from going with a full five grape. I'm going to go with, if I can keep this together here, Bobby, can you get that? Good. We got that? Awesome. I got a four and a half. That's our first oh, half grape rating. Oh, you like that? Four and a half. That's good. Four and a half grape. I got a, I got a four and a half. Uh, that's a true grape head for you. That's right. right. That's four right. and a half grapes. I, if it would have been a red, I'm, I'm biased. I admit my bias. Yes. I'd have gone yes. five grapes, but, you know, I got to go four and a half on that one. Awesome job on that one. That was there cool. Go. You're gonna have there a lot go. of copycats, I can tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you're in the club, David, you got some on your on the way to you too. You I, already got I it. I absolutely. Or, I do yeah. have it on the way. I yeah. just got my first shipment uh, <laughs> a week ago from tomorrow. Okay, oh, sorry. so <laughs> we've got a, everybody. I want you to find David. David, tell him your last name, please. So that all of the Pipkin. P I P K I N. Pipkin. And cast the way in tonight. the wine club in the wine gang, please, friend David. Pipkin on Facebook right now. Not look, right look now. Up, right if, now. Right, if you look up David L. Pipkin, that's the true profile. I've got a, I've got a uh, imposter profile out there that I just use for work. So just do the David L. Pipkin. Pipkin. We need and he's got a mic. He's got a mic. He's rocking out in his profile picture. So you know you, you, know you got the right one. Right. Oh, I just him. changed it. I got my grandbaby up in this one. Oh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, all right, so. all right. Grandbaby in the profile. All right. Yes, sir. Hashtag grandbaby. Steve. <laughs> All Steve. right, okay, here we go. You're the dissenting vote. I can see it. No, I can not. see I, it. I, I'm, I, I nurse my stuff, so. I, I uh, want to take his I'm going to do the same thing class. as David did, but don't think I'm copying him. It's Please just, don't. It's very copying. Very yeah, playground you would never mentality. Do that. I'm giving this sucker um, <laughs> a good four and a half, a good solid four and a half. Four nice. and a half. Um, nice. It was very enjoyable. So, um, I would buy it, and I would drink it. And I know my wife would. Let me tell you guys. To to me. Ah! I drink both red and white. I swing both ways. You go both ways. Oh. Oh. Ooh, wow! If it's wow. not black and white, now it's red and white, man. What is it with you in color? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity drinker. What can I say? <laughs> He's a wine capitalist. <laughs> He's a wine. Oh my gosh! Oh, the show is man. quickly devolving right here in front of your eyes. 
right? I will say I drink both red and white. It just depends on the time of year. I kind of prefer the whites during the summer when it's cooler. I like the, the cool wines, uh, you know, with the hot weather. Winter time, I go to the reds. But I have I drank many Chardonnays, hands down, my favorite Chardonnay I've ever had. Mm. It was just silky smooth. Just had this kind of a buttery smoothness yeah. to it. I mean, it was just amazing. Oh, my gosh. That's uh, just the one thing I was liking, buttery. Buttery. Buttery smooth. Butter. Butter. Oh, but uh, five five grapes, absolutely. I would give it five and a half if I could. I mean, it was just yeah, you want to I love it. it. You right? Can do a five, you can do a five and a half, man. So I right. just gotta do the paper. Right. Yes, delicious. I, um, hey everybody, I'm Cindy G of the Cindy Project. <laughs> Did we mention that? <laughs> Cindy, Cindy, Cindy G white wine. No. Shameless plug queen. Shameless plug queen. I got you on the on the plugs. Okay, I want to see everybody that is viewing us right now or coming back to view this um, the replay. Please, 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 we need you to be at both Zoom Barrel uh, on Saturday. And what's well, something's happening on Friday? Oh, we and to tune in on Friday because the show is still going on on Friday. The show is going on Friday. We're going to talk about some of this stuff yeah. here live on Friday. But definitely show up at Zoom Barrel on Kirkendall next Friday, Kirkendall. next Saturday, rather, Saturday. Shouts out to uh, Austin Zuloff, who is going to be on the panel yeah, talking Zuloff. about this wow. gentleman has freed over 300 families from their job. I just want y'all to know that. He has his own training program. He is our number one earner in direct sellers. In direct sellers, the number one earner we have going to be here with us, Joe. And I also have commitments. This is big for you. This is oh, big dang. for us. Oh, dang. David DeStefano, our founder will be here. He has he has Get already out. agreed to come to he have we haven't set closed the date yet. We haven't but he's coming and he's gonna be on the show. What? Absolutely. Wow. The founder. Now so you got some range to that voice, man. What? <laughs> what? Say what? Say what? what? Chilling chilling so, to the uh, rating. Yeah, I'm handing him the mic on the high part. What? Yes. Okay, so That's I don't all, really I got, drink Chardonnay. Don't, don't stop believing man. I'm just saying. Don't stop. Don't stop for wheeling. <laughs> okay, well. I think we're going out after the show. Oh, yeah. going to hang out a bit. The Listen, wine works. And, the, minute, and the, wine the, wine so the wine connoisseurs are going to turn to margarita connoisseurs here in a couple hours. So here we go. Yeah. The wine works. I'm just saying. I'm going to stick with the wine. I'm All right. What, what's All right. Ready? So what's ready? So I absolutely um, love Pinot Grigio. That's my jam. Pinot Grigio is my jam. I do a little white. I go both ways, a little bit, a little, little, little reds, mostly whites. And I, Pinot Grigio, is every, and everybody that knows me, they know that I drink Pinot Grigio. So Chardonnay, I might do it once in a while. Joe, I'm with you. This is my absolute favorite. I give it a five grapes. I'm a super great head for Four and a half, four and a half, five, five. five. Bam! This one gets a five. Thanks, Dave That's DeStefano. So far, right? Thanks to yeah. the sommeliers that went out yep. and picked it. I don't even know the sommelier's name. I wish I could meet that person in person. Mm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm a I'm a white wine guy. I take after my mom. I, I love a nice big jug of Livingston French Columbard for eight bucks. Nice big jug. A nice big jug. Yes. You hook your finger in me. Yeah. She always said that when she retired, she wanted to wake up at noon and drink wine until she fell asleep and she did that oh, I love for that. 10 years. Um, I'm a big white wine guy. Along with the buttery thing, you can never have, too, you can never have too much butter, is like what butter. she always said too. But However, it's not a, a top flight champagne, so I'm gonna have to copy. I'm gonna have to copy and go with the four and a half grapes. Wow. The top flight champagne. Hashtag trendsetter. Top, Hashtag. Top flight champagne is the only white. This still looks like I copied me, man. Twenty three so buttery. It is so buttery. A lot of fruit. A lot of lot of good fruit. Um, no. I don't know what. Uh, just it wasn't grapes, too sweet. It was not too sweet. Right there. I, I have to tell you. I mean, like the, for me, it was just how smooth the, smooth. the finish was. It's green smooth. green apple and Asian pear. It's like with the hint of vanilla and toast. Well, you know what? I mean, honestly, when when I when it's I read toast. that, I was worried. It's very buttery. I was worried that the uh, the pear. And the uh, what was it? The other thing you said, the apple. Uh, we're going to be too strong. All right. Yes. That, that, that's that was right. that's a that's a pretty potent mix, right? I was like, oh wow, it may be a little a little too much. But man, I just tell you what, there, there were just like it was just hints of it there. It was it was just the right level. It was such a smooth finish to it. That was the thing for me that was the killer. I mean, it was just 
I could drink that all day long. It went down without thinking about it. I mean, yeah, exactly. I could I could drink that all day long. I give it five and so so far so far it's our highest rated wine on the show. Twenty three point five stars out of twenty five. That's pretty more than four point six six six. Yes, more than four point six six six. Yes, yes. Our statistician in the house, which is which is really close. That's right there with it. That's right there with it. So a phenomenal wine. Thank you. All right, love you peeps. Gotta go. Wine down. Uh, the answer is always Fudge Randall. He said, what up, guys? I am at Bucky's. Need anything? Yes, I'm starving. Uh, Please bring food. I need food. Bobby had the right answer, man. Always oh, Fudge Randall. Always Fudge That's right. All right. Thank y'all for tuning in, guys. Another great show. Bye. Wine, no wine. Tune in next Friday, 5 o'clock. We'll be